All right, everyone, uh, River finally laid her eggs. Um, she laid them yesterday, so about 20 hours ago. Want to make sure she was nice and done. Um, I've already pulled about five good ones out. Um, she kind of had them rolling around in here, and I didn't want them to move around too much, but they have perfect veins in them, and they look great. Um, as you can see, there are a couple of slugs, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's pull this cover off and see how we did. There she is. She is a Matrix Possible Head T Positive Albino. She was produced by Keith McPeak and she was bred to a golden eye that was produced by Nick over at Cold Blooded Earth. Come on. Okay. Gently lift her up. Move her around. There we go. Perfect. And feeling up underneath. Make sure she's empty. She feels like she is. Yeah, she's nice and empty. Set her to the side and we will get her soaking here in a little bit. Clean her up, clean up the enclosure. But let's see what we got. So we've already got five in the incubator, five. There's six. Peel off some of that. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen good eggs. And there are a total of two three, four, five slugs. So not too bad at all. Um, 17 good eggs, five slugs. Um, of course, I always would prefer not to have any slugs, but it is what it is. All right, let's see. That looks good, nice strong veins. That one's good. Yep, nice strong veins. Yep, good, good, good. That one's good, 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 and good. It's hard to see with the light on and everything, but, and if you were ever curious how big a blood python egg is, let's pull out a scale. Let's zero it out at zero grams. And this one looks like it's pretty easy to remove. Set that on there. That is a 146 gram egg, or 145. Can I give you an idea? Not all of them are quite that big. Here's another one. 130 gram. So they're pretty decent size eggs. If you can see them. But they're not huge. They're not anything anywhere near like a retake or a Burmese or anything like that. But they are a decent size egg and um, the babies hatch out pretty decent size. They um, start off feeding on small adult mice or rat pups. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get these set up and I'll show you how I do that. All right, guys, this is how I set up my eggs. I got vermiculite and it's pretty soaked. And then I put a light diffuser down, a great light diffuser, cut it to the size of the tub. And then I put my eggs on top of that. So the eggs are not sitting on the substrate right now. Uh, last year I did, did it where the eggs were in the substrate and I dialed back on the water quite a bit. But um, this year I'm just gonna use the light diffuser. Um, the lids, I've actually got a little weather seal going all the way around. I will be burping these about weekly to bi-weekly. Um, just to make sure there's a good oxygen exchange in there um, while keeping the humidity. Um, with these little handles, there is a little bit of air that escapes. So it's not like you're choking out the egg anyways. So I usually try to keep um, in this size container. This is a shoebox size. And I try to only keep um, seven eggs maximum. So um, I may do seven in this one, I may do six in another one and just fill up the rest on the third container. Um, 
But on this one, I've already got the five eggs that um, I pulled already. Those were the ones that she rolled out of the, the hide and they were kind of standalone on their own. So didn't want them rolling around. I marked them with two little dots to make sure I know those are the ones that rolled out. Now the ones from today, just set those in there. Always keep them in the same direction that um, they were laid in. Um, if they rolled around, you can candle them and make sure they're, they go back into the same orientation. Go. So there is my seven that are in that tub. I used little cut up plastic straws just to make sure they don't roll around. Some people use um, golfing tees. And they shouldn't ever roll around, but just in case, if you ever have to pull out the tub for any reason. And from there, I don't use any of the um, peel and stick, or not peel and stick, but press and seal saran wrap that some people use. Um, I prefer just to put a little bit of gasket on there. It's not airtight and it really doesn't need to be. And there we go, there's one. All right, here comes the next. Here we go. And I've already had these in the incubator for about a week now, just to make sure they're the, the right temperature. You don't wanna put the eggs on cold water and cold substrate and all that. And light diffuser. Here down make sure no water is going anywhere near the egg Let's see which ones are loose some of them are stuck together and if I don't have to I'm planning not to peel them apart go it's two Since they were laid quite a while ago, they are stuck together, which is completely fine. One thing I do not like is when you have paper substrate, it sticks to it. And I've tried to give these guys um, lay boxes and all that with a different substrate and they, they always seem to go where I don't want them to go, <laughs> which is just fine. Here we go. These in here. There's seven. And since they're all stuck together, I really don't need those T's. They're pretty sturdy, but I will put them on a couple of the ends. And you also don't want them touching any of the edges. There we go. Don't want any of the water dripping on top of the egg. You also don't want the eggs touching the top of the lid. Next box. And this is just gonna have the last two in them. Another light diffuser. Go.
And there we go. They're all set up. We're going to get these in the incubator, give or take about 60 days. They should, they should start to hatch and we'll go from there. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, we appreciate any uh, support we can get. And we're trying to build this channel up. We're finally under 500, finally over 500 subscribers. So it's a big milestone and we'll see you next time.